This call is now being recorded. Jangan cakap benda bukan-bukan kalau tengah record. Ha? Semua boleh nampak Everyone can see what I'm showing Boleh, 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 boleh. Okay, clear Okay, so I start Banyak ni yang sekarang join Okay, so uh, today uh, Hari ni kita akan uh, We'll discuss about uh at match trial question so as you all know if you want uh, kalau kamu nak jadi bagus dalam at match uh one of the key is you must actually buat banyak latihan untuk trial questions it's some of people coming so yang saya recommend buat ialah 2021 and 2022 kenapa sebab dua-dua ni pss yang format terbaru Jangan buat yang 2020 dan sebelumnya Sebab yang ni KBSF So standard question sekarang Based pada yang terbaru ni Dan juga tahun ni ini lah Sebab akan keluar trial tahun ini 2023 So sebelum SPM Kamu boleh cuba yang ni So sekarang sebelum ni ni datang Kamu buat dua ini dulu Based uh, on your week topics Topik yang lemah kamu boleh Fokus lebih kepada trial ni Yang recommended Kamu tahulah MRSM, SBP Yang ni dua-dua sangat penting Dan juga soalan SPM past year, past year Maksudnya tahun 2021 ada Boleh tengok kat online boleh beli juga uh, Untuk saya punya batch 2022 masih tak ada Tapi soon dia akan keluar lah dalam bentuk hard copy Atau soft copy boleh lihat So yang ni pun satu yang mesti kamu buat Soalan SPM sebenar Okay so semua clear tentang briefing yang awal? Hmm, good. Okay. So this is your first question. So my first question actually. Yang ni soalan pertama. Okay, so yang ambil dalam BM bagus. Sebab set soalan ni semua dalam BM. So kamu boleh baca. So yang ni saya akan terangkan dalam English. So saya akan translate semua ini sebab yang mungkin tak bagus belajar uh, term mathematics dalam BM saya akan tukar lah so okay so now I switch to English so this is actually SMK, SABK paper if you know this, this is actually Aslama body so it's quite a good paper to attempt also besides your MRSM and SBP so this is another recommended one as well so yeah, so let's go to first functions huh? so they say three uh, fair dices. BG dadu yang adil is fair dices. So they said with different colors are tossed. So if you have different colors that are tossed, uh, you're going to expect different possibilities of course la, from the three dices. So the numbers that are obtained from the red, yellow and green dices are 2, 2 and 5. Okay. So, so far you can understand how it is going, the flow of the question. In when you see this word masing masing, uh, it means respectively actually. There's some sort of noise like knocking in the back. Is it from me or others or your side? Oh, this one is because I'm using my pen to write on the this thing, the screen. So that's the thing. It's just my pen actually. I can make it softer. Ah yeah, but the stylus pen. Ah, uh, yeah. I'll try to be softer with it. So, okay. So, this one, whenever they say masing masing, means uh, the red dice, you have number two, the yellow dice, you have number two, and the green dice, you have number five. So, you can see here, this is in your first subtopic of functions. So, this one is where you have your object and your image here. So the first thing they ask you is to draw an arrow diagram. So this is what you call an arrow diagram here, these two circles. 
So usually you will have your object over here and your image over here. Ah, finally, my school gang coming. <laughs> Hi, Vishal. Not too late. Just started. Call the rest as well. <laughs> so object and image. So this is your arrow diagram. This comes under 1.1. 1 .1, huh? So how to do it is you must first identify where is your object and image. So if you can see over here, uh, this one. Okay, so if you see here, this red, green, and uh, yellow is going to come your object, which is over here. So you just write down back the whole thing. Red, yellow, and green. So yeah, that's how you do it. And then the result of this, this is your image over here. So then you will put two and five. Don't put two two times, huh? Yang nombor dua tu jangan bubo dua kali sebab dia adalah image yang sama nilai. So we'll only write one time only because two objects. So you can see here, the red one will go here, the yellow one will go here, and the green one will go here. So if I ask you now, let's see. Uh, how good is your understanding of this? Apakah uh, hubungan yang ni antara dua-dua set? What's the relation shown from these two circles? Many to one good. Because you see this part over here. Two objects share one image. So that's how I identify whether you know or not. So this is how you draw actually the whole thing. So yeah, uh, nothing much here actually. Yeah, that's it. So that's how you show. So this one you will get one mark to show correctly for this question. This is part one, huh? So part one only one mark. So yeah, next part two. So all clear with part one, huh? Since the basics only. Also quiet. <laughs> next, uh, which one is the relation? Uh, is the function a relation? So, okay, this one, I think, Vishal, you asked this question, I think. Can you help to explain about the, what, all these relation things, many to one, the vertical line test, all that. So now, I'm going to show it here. Uh, let me add one page for you. Okay, so here I'm going to explain all about this uh, relation. So first of all is how do you identify functions? Macam mana kita nak kenal pasti sesuatu itu fungsi ke tidak? They last you. So this one you're going to use your vertical line test. Mm, yeah, I bet. So first of all, you need to understand if it's functions, there's only two possibilities of relation. Ada hanya dua uh, kemungkinan dia boleh dikategorikan sebagai function sebab uh, Yang belakang ni mesti hanya satu image. One to one dan many to one. So kamu boleh lihat persamaan kat sini. Belakang kat sini untuk jadi function mesti hanya satu image. One number. Anything that's one only. So uh, mengapa saya kata begitu? So in match there's always proof. Right? So how do I prove this statement of mine is correct or not? Kamu boleh buat satu sketch yang uh, macam graf. So let's say, hmm, let me think what shape should I use. Okay. So this type of graph kamu semua familiar kan? Boleh komen tak apa nama graf ni? Kamu yang belajar graf ni sama uh, dari lower form juga ada graf ni. What name of the graph? Like you have quadratic, cubic, all that. If this shape, what is the name of the graph? Linear graph, yeah, correct. Because the straight line. So linear graph is y is mx plus c. So if I ask you from here, do you think linear graph is a function or not? Adakah uh, graph linear to satu fungsi ke tak? Yeah, I know it's an yeah, equation. Is it a function or not for this chapter? Any linear graph? You say no. 
I think no, yes. Okay, wait now, let me see. Mm, the answer is yes. So how I prove it is, you see this. When you want to know whether it's a function or not, kalau kamu nak tahu ya fungsi ke tidak, kamu kena buat vertical line test ni. Ah, betul. So you see, berapa point dia intersect kat graph ni? Satu saja. Satu saja maksudnya kat sini ada satu image saja dan syarat untuk jadi fungsi adalah kena ada satu image saja kat belakang. So that's why I say kalau kamu nak kenal pasti function atau tak fokus uh, diri kamu kat image. Sama ada dia dapat satu image ke atau many image. So how I prove it is kamu lukis graph untuk soalan yang dia bagi. Kalau dia bagi equation macam ni Kamu boleh randomly draw any kind of graph. Kalau kamu tahu shape dia macam ni, kuadratik, kamu akan lukis macam ni. Ya, yeah, betul. Correct. Only one to one and many to one is a function. So, yeah, that's how I prove it. So, for Vishal, uh, I'll draw another graph, then you see whether you understand or not what I say for this one. Say X and Y, yeah. Have you seen this type of graph? Like circle shape. Anyone knows what we call this kind of graph? Siapa tahu bentuk graph ni nama apa? You have learned, kamu pernah belajar dalam form 4 chapter 7. Form 4 chapter 7 at max. They'll always ask you to find this thing. Equation of something. The form, yeah, of course. Equation of correct loci or locus. So this is how a locus graph looks like. So if I ask you from here, everyone, do you think it's a function or not? Correct, not a function. Why? You just randomly do a vertical line test. You see, right? They are can intersect at dua point yang berbeza. Maksudnya, ini ada dua image berbeza. There's two different image. Because you see over here. There are two different y coordinates here, y2 and y1. Kat sini dan, eh, bukan intersect kat sini, kat sini. So no matter how vertical line 2, many to many, so not a function. Yeah, if you want to see function or not, the back part must only always be one. Only one to one and many to one. So that's how you identify. Okay, so yeah. So untuk vertical line test, kamu akan expect hanya ada satu objek sebab vertical line ni is actually selari or parallel dengan y-axis. So macam mana kamu draw vertical line pun, dia akan intersect pada x-coordinate kat sini dan kat sini yang sama. Hanya yang membezakannya, what is difference is only the image, the coordinate of the image here. So that is why we are doing this test here, to actually see the relation and then you identify whether it's a function or not. So yeah, that's how I prove it. Lah. So we shall clearer now. Ah, so that's how you see. Another one you said that was horizontal, right? I can show you here as well. Why do we do horizontal? Horizontal is the opposite of vertical. So horizontal, huh? Bisa, where your other friends never come yet, huh? So this one horizontal. We always want to see your okay. I ask you first. Horizontal test we do for what? To determine what? Inverse. Good. Whether got inverse function or not. Okay, so again, I'm going to use the graph example for you. Now, let's say I want to do... Why are people messaging me? Okay, so let's say I want to do graph here. Um, semua tahu tak bentuk graph ni nama dia apa? Everyone knows what's the name of this graph. What equation is it? Cubic, correct. So let's say I want to randomly test and see does cubic equation have an inverse function or not. 
to see must use horizontal, right? Horizontal line test. And again, you will see that horizontal line intersect at one point only. So, yeah. So, one point means if we intersect one point, means it's going to have one object of X and satu image of Y. So, kamu boleh lihat kat sini. Satu object, satu image. Maksudnya, dia ada one to one. Dan kalau inverse function, hanya one to one relation boleh ada inverse function. Jadi, kamu kena ingat. So, untuk yang uh, inverse function punya relationship, kamu kena fokuskan dekat objek. Objek mesti satu. Baru boleh ada inverse function. Sebab vertical line test ni, kita boleh lihat perbezaan pada bahagian uh, objek dia. Kalau yang up yang ni, yang vertical line test, kami lihat means in the equation only have x and not x square. Which equation? The down one now. If inverse function means in the equation I put it. Um, let me think. If quad oh you means you're saying if quadratic equation yeah quadratic equation won't have inverse function because quadratic like this right quadratic bentuk dia macam ni kalau kamu buat horizontal line test ada dua point dah maksudnya tak ada inverse function straight away you can identify tak kisah uh, value a b dan c dia apa tetap takkan ada inverse function no matter how ah uh, so that's how you see because if for inverse function we care about the object always remember that if object dah jadi many like as you can see over at this quadratic function because yang ni paksi y yang ni paksi x kamu dot 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 kat bawah kamu akan ada dua x value tapi satu y value saja kat sini yang ni uh, this is the rough sketch only so it might not, might not be accurate but that's what i'm trying to show you lah so yeah so we shall go deep I think now it's better for you. You always remember the, yeah, got it. Mm. So horizontal line, always remember object. If vertical line, always care about the image. Both must be one for the both uh, horizontal and vertical line. So now we can go here. Now we, now I test you and see whether you understand or not. So is this relation a function or not? Number two. Based on the arrow diagram I do. I do. Yeah, correct. Betul. So, just have to say, uh, yes, lah. no need to say anything. So, you just have to write, yes. So, kalau kamu tulis macam ni, yes, maksudnya kamu dapat dah satu marka. So, soalan ni kan atas dua markah total untuk kamu. Ya, yeah, betul. Because it's many to one. That's why it's a function. So, that's how you do it. So, part B. Okay, this one's so quite famous. Your basic for your function. Subtopic 1.1. So, mereka cakap fungsi F memetakan set X kepada set Y. So, you analyze the diagram first. Kamu boleh analisis diagram ni. So, Anyone tahu, boleh volunteer tahu anyone, Domain dan Julat, who can tell correctly? This one, one mark only. So basically, inverse is one to many. One to one function is many to one, many to many. Uh, what you mean basically inverse is one to many? Uh, the function is an inverse function if it's a one to one relation only. Means the function they give you in the question, it will have an inverse function if the relation is one to one based on the graph that you can interpret from that equation. Uh, that's how you see it. Domain negative 1, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, betul, correct? So, 
uh, I want to ask you, will you write your answer negative one, one, two, three, like this, everyone? You think this, is this correct? If I write this for domain? Yeah, correct. Thanks, Michelle, pointing that out. The curly bracket, always they emphasize that. Make sure you put it in the curly bracket. So that's your domain. So Jula, anyone? Yeah, cool, man. Jula was so quite easy. If don't mean you always refer to your object, remember. One more, so how is this one over here? Yeah, correct. 941. Ah, uh, okay. So this one Jula. You can write like this also. Nine four one. The order whether it's ascending or descending, you don't need to worry in this case because it's just stating the domain and this thing only. And you follow the order here basically up to down. I think down to up also there's no problem. Yeah. Based on the answer scheme, they put it like how Daniel was it. We write you follow from up to down. So that's how you get your mark for this one. So this one you get one mark, this one also you get one mark. So two marks over here. So this one, ah, now this is a challenging part. This question especially. This one is a very interesting thing I want to point out to all of you actually. So I'll do A first. So, so far everyone okay, yeah? Before I go to this question. All good. Okay. So now we see part A, yeah? So when they give you like this, you can always copy back inside when you're writing your solution, just to ensure you're on the right path. You can get an idea also where to start from. So this part, we're actually testing you. Soalan ini menguji kamu tentang subtopik 1.2. Kamu tahu tak buat composite function. So yeah, that's your subtopic. So now the mereka kata ungkapkan efek dalam sebutan x, m dan n. So masa masa ini kamu tengok tiga variable. When you see three variables, don't get scared. It's still the same thing. Only concept tu masih sama. Hanya uh, what to say? Uh, how berapa complex equation tu mungkin akan jadi lebih complex lah dalam soalan macam ni. Tapi masih sama saja guna asas matematik yang kamu belajar dalam lower form. So, your lower form maths basics must be strong when you enter this kind of parts. So, yeah. In admats, they already expect you to know all the algebra parts. You're learning new things now like composite function. These are all our concepts that you need to learn. Any concept kamu kena belajar sekarang. Tapi yang ni asas dari form 1 to 3 kena strong dah. Kalau kamu, if you want to enter admats in form 4 and form 5. So, this is an assumption they make here for you all when you take admats. So now we see. So if I say f g x, uh, function mana yang datang dulu f ke g? So a lot of people confused. Which function comes first? Which function compass f or g when we do composite function of f, g, x? G, yeah, correct. So why I say g? Because we want to substitute this g here inside the f over here. So that's how you do it. So... When you have your G, so now you don't have your G. I mean, you don't have your F, sorry. Now we want to find F. So how is the technique we're going to use to find out? Actually, here you have two, two methods. I'll show you both. So just bear with me. So you have two options here. So method one first. Huh? Method two, I want you all to think and see. What is another way you can solve this question? So first method is your normal method. When you do composite function, f m x plus n is 2x squared plus 8x plus 7. 
So where I get this mx plus n, this is your gx function. Remember, they already gave you in the question. So, so far, okay. And I express like this. Okay, so now I continue from here. You see, you have to make this assumption over here. Let mx plus n equals to y. So why I do this is you want to find fx, right? If I let this equals to y, you can actually eventually substitute your y object with your x at the end. So that's why I make this assumption here. So the goal here is to actually express x in terms of y. Ungkapkan x dalam sebutan y. Uh, nice method. Actually, this uh, maybe you learn the other method. Lah. So, yeah, there's two methods actually. So, you're going to express x in terms of y so that later you can actually substitute. Hey, sorry. You can actually substitute this one, all these x terms in your equation composite function with your y. So, that's how you can get fy equals something, something y. Your equation will be in terms of y already. Later, you just need to substitute the n, uh, y with x after you simplify the whole thing. So that's how I do it. So now we want to express, right? So how you express your equation? Again, your lower form basics. Uh, you think so touch sensitive. So mx equals y minus n. So on top there, you do like this from here. So you will get x equals to y minus n over m. So from here, don't get stressed out because a lot of variables coming still follow your same basics. So here you said let mx plus n equals y, right? So you follow what you assume here. So here you're going to write as y already from now on. So that's how you do it. So you will put fy equals to, so just now on top here, 2x squared, right? So what is your x? This one. You already found out here. So 2 bracket y minus n over n squared plus 8x. What is your x? Same thing. y minus n over m and then plus 7 also at the back based on your equation. So, so far, understand? Okay. So now it's uh, going to expand already. So when you expand, be careful because here is square. Eh? So square means don't only expand the top. You need to expand the bottom denominator. Kat bawah ni. So kalau kamu expand, kamu akan dapat y square tolak 2yn tambah n square. This one is your quadratic. When you study chapter 2, you can expand directly from here. Usually people will work what dua bracket macam ni dan expand, tapi kamu boleh buat pass method terus tengok dan expand macam ni. So over m square. So here normal eight kamu kamu akan expand ke dalam ni ke dua term. So kamu akan dapat eight y tolak eight n over m tambah tujuh. Ah faster way yeah correct also. So next how you do? I'll do in an extra page, huh? but not enough space here. So how to continue this? Well, let me see up there. F y is this one. Okay, so from here, you can actually expand the two inside all of this also. So it's getting more complex, but still the same. So how you do it is, you will get F y is 2y square minus 4ny plus 2n square over m square square here so yeah then you copy back the same thing you got just now 8y minus 8n over m plus 7 so from here anyone can tell me how to proceed my working macam mana nak uh, simplify lagi seluruh equation ni What can we do to this equation? M become M square times M square. Yeah, correct. That's what they're doing basically. 
So what they do is actually rationalize the denominator to the whole thing over m square because m square is the largest term here. Here is m here is over one only. So the whole thing is m square. So from here, m square and m square you divide, you get one. So you just copy back the numerator up there. So you will get like this. And then here, m and m square means you need to times m to the on top here to be same. So you will get plus 8my minus 8ny. Be careful lah, got many m and n. So don't, jangan tersalah tulis pula. So yang ni, m square and 1. Uh, we shall, what, what 8 and uh, I made a mistake now. Uh. Wait now. Uh. Wait, which one? 8MY. Oh, why you put the Y there? Thanks. So, yeah. So, that's how you point out to me. It's so good. It means you really understand your expansion well. So, 8MN. And then at the side here, how you do it is, m square and 1 means you're going to put m square here means you times the whole thing up here by m square over m square so anytime when you modify an equation when you times it you must make sure you what the value you times in the end is 1 because m square divide m square you get 1 means you're not modifying the equation in any way so when you times 7 with m square you get 7 m square over here so from here is you just permutakan the whole thing so let me see can i permutakan anything yeah, nothing much. Actually, you cannot already. There's no like terms that you can find over here. You don't need to like separate the whole equation, like divide all these terms with m square, m square, or like that. The one no need. This is more uh, better written. Lah. So if you want to do that, also can. So what's your last step here? What is the last step I'm missing uh, before I write my answer? Sub, uh, what do you mean by sub? Fx, yeah, good. So you must put, yeah, actually you can write sub y with x. So that's how you show to the examiner. So you will get Fx. So all the y terms on your right hand side of the equation, you must replace it with x, huh? basically. So for nx plus 2n plus 8 mx all your y you make it as x all this same if m and n you don't need to change anything thanks for the lesson hey eh? oh you have to go already okay so now when you divide m square so then you will get ah this is your answer lah, basically so this is how you leave it looks complex but this is where you leave your answer so this question actually three marks. So where you're going to get your marks here, actually, you'll see over here. So getting marks in NMATS is also something very important that everyone should understand. Like which, jangan uh, kerja mana yang kamu mesti tunjuk untuk dapat marka tu. So saya akan tunjuk ke sini. So tiga marka akan, maksudnya satu marka tu datang dari jawapan anda yang betul. Dua marka tu jalan kerja yang betul. So, mereka akan lihat. So, first mark, maka yang pertama, kalau kamu tunjuk yang ni. Yang ni betul kamu dapat satu marka. Sebab kamu boleh tunjuk yang gx function tu kamu ganti dalam fgx kat sini. So, yang tu kamu dapat satu marka. So, next one. Next marka is bila kamu boleh Tunjuk penggantian ni. Yang ni dalam ni. Kamu dapat satu marka lagi. Because kamu boleh express X in terms of Y and N and N. So when you can substitute this inside this, you can get another mark automatically. So yang ni pun kena betul lah. Seluruh equation ni mereka akan check kalau sama ke tak. Baru boleh dapat marka tu. So final mark. Kalau kamu boleh dapat jawapan yang ni betul, yang ni dapat satu marka. So total kamu dapat tiga dari sini. 
So that's the marking scheme, lah, basically. So all clear for this. Nah, so complex. Yeah, the, actually it's not complex. The concept is the same from on top. Actually, only from this part onwards it came complex. And you went from here, here until down. So that's why it came complex because you need to expand the power increases and more terms like that. All here actually is all the expansion only, nothing much. Yeah, this is why at max sometimes you can lose a lot of marks because of careless. All these parts over here. Sometimes people neglect. The simple algebra parts all this year where actually they gave you marks actually because all this will affect your final answer in the end but it's still okay right? you still get two marks instead of the final mark here if you get it wrong so but if you lose one 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 mark like that it adds up to a lot actually and maths you can lose one grade maybe so yeah that's how the marks are going in and maths so next one uh part b uh, this one harder a bit so this one's quite an interesting one actually. So, so they say find the values of m and n. So sekarang kita ada dua pemalar kan m and n. So sekarang mereka kata cari value sekiranya f x tu sama dua x square tolak satu. So this uh, assumption they making here. So assumption is part b f x is two x square minus one. So is the assumption they make. And if you realize, right, here you already found your fx. That's ini. Seluruh ini, ini ialah fx kamu. Tapi jawapan niat, ini saja. So, how are you going to express this? So, you can copy back the whole thing. So, you will get. Uh, wait, I didn't show the second method, right? For the part B. Oh my god, I didn't show that one yet. The part B second method is actually doing inverse function only, basically. So just now you have your fgx, you have your fx, I mean you have your gx. Your question is find out fx, right? Kamu kena cari fx ni. So apa bo kamu boleh buat kat sini, yalah. Anyone can tell lah. Ah, yeah, correct, Daniel. This is the method we use. means kamu buat inverse function, cari inverse function gx supaya kamu boleh cancel normal function g itu. Sebab g, g inverse x, kamu akan dapat objek dia balik x. So, lepas tu kamu boleh lihat fx terus dapat already. Yeah, so that's how you use inverse function to cancel out the normal function. So, inverse function how to find itu ialah satu konsep juga. So, kita akan guna yang ni. Let G inverse X sama dengan Y. So, melalui ini kita boleh express Y in terms of X. Sebab kita nak cari nilai Y dalam uh, ungkapan X. Untuk conclude bahawa G inverse X itu apa. So, step dia macam ni. So, you get X equals G Y. Sebab G ini inverse kan. Kamu pindah kat sini negatif, dia jadi positif kat sini. So, GX equation 2 dia macam ni. GX sama dengan uh, mana dia GX? Kat atas pun. GX is MX plus N. Okay. So, actually sama saja dengan kaedah atas tapi sikit berbeza saja. So, MX plus N yang X kat sini kamu kena ganti dengan Y sebab sekarang fungsi dia Y as an object under function G. So, kamu akan dapat macam ni. Sekarang tugas ungkap Y dalam X. Kena ingat. So, sekarang X dalam Y. Ungkapan dia. So, sekarang kita kena inverse. That's why we call it inverse function. So, X, N boleh bawa ke sini jadi tolak sama dengan MY. So, Y is equal to X minus N over M. So, dari sini, apa kamu boleh conclude? Kat sini. What is your inverse function now? What's the next step I should write over here? Others also try, not only Daniel. Got how many people here? Eight. Uh, others eight also can try. 
what will be my next step to proceed with? Anyone knows what can I conclude from here? Remember, I made this assumption on top here, this part. Let G inverse X is Y. So now I have my Y already here. So what can I write after this? Sub G inverse X into Y. Yeah, correct. So that's how you do it. Because we already made the assumption Y is G inverse X on top. So that's why I can use this step over here. This part. So you already found your inverse function. So from here, you can just cancel off the normal function, basically. So i do another page. So we know that fg, g inverse x is gx, right? So your inverse function now we have is this one, x minus n over m equals to, sorry, not gx, fx. So this is equal to fx now. And this is going to come your x for your composite function. Kamu da ada composite function ka atas. 2x squared plus 8x plus 7. So semua yang ni, ini akan jadi x. So you kena substitute yang ni dalam semua term x kat sini. So kamu akan dapat 2x tolak n per m squared. Actually sama step saja dengan Ah, uh, last step. Cuma yang ni asal dia jadi y. Lepas tu tukar kat x. Tapi sekarang dah ada dalam x. Tak perlu tukar dah. So kamu akan dapat macam ni. Tambah tujuh. So this sama dengan fx. So sekarang you just continue to expand. Kamu akan dapat jawapan. Sama step seperti sebelumnya. So fx akan equal dengan yang ni. you will get the same thing minus 8mn plus 7m square over m square so this is your answer so i don't want to show the expansion or like that one you can see from the previous working also so yeah so this one also this method you can also get three marks so if i ask anyone anyone know where your three marks come from huh? so now it's your turn to become the teacher for yourself so you can check which part you think you can get the marks from? Which step? So that you know which step you can actually show. Which step you think is the best one? <laughs> Everyone boycott you, I think. <laughs> others, others. Daniel, you don't know, huh? <laughs> This is where I started from actually. So from here. Which step you think from here can get one mark? The last one got three marks, you know. Where's the other two marks? One answer for one mark for the last answer. Where's the other two marks coming from? From your working, what? So which working is gonna get it? You think which one? Just guess. Oh, you mean last answer? You mean this one? No? This one is not the answer, la, but still part of the working. Ryan, some more to so yeah, actually this one is where you get your one mark actually. 
So this is one mark here. So I just tell that directly since no one knows. So next one you see here, where's your other mark? So you can see that when you can substitute this correctly over here, this one you get another mark as well. Because when you show substitution in NMATS, you always get a mark. That's why this step don't leave it out, even if you know already. You must show this step compulsory, compulsory to show to get the mark. So last answer, you said, yeah, of course, love one more mark. So your last answer here, you get one mark. So that is part A and one. So these are three marks. So, so far, everyone understand? Even if I don't substitute correctly, I still get marked right when I show the substitution. Um, maybe not because it's not the correct value. Actually, I'm not sure. Your final answer, of course, you'll get wrong lah, because it's not the correct value. But if I substitute, don't, don't substitute correctly. Maybe not, lah, I don't think so. Usually, they will check line for line with the answer scheme see whether it's exactly the same or not because that mark is entitled if you show it correctly only yeah where your other friends never invite huh? so part b now oh adi here actually but just silent because of you so part b Ah, finally, someone is thinking, is it 8 NX or 8 MX? 8, huh? 8, oh, this one. Uh, M, I think, wait, huh? Let me check. Uh, 8 MX, sorry, huh? This one is M. Okay. So, yeah. That's how you solve for this one. I think others copying, that's why they quiet. Now I know why. <laughs> If you want to use like Daniel, you can use also because since you're the only one responding, so it's easier for me to directly talk with you also. So next part B. So I read the question. So this is the question over here. Hey, yo. The only one talking is a shy cat. So this one, they said find the values of M and N if Fx equals 2x squared minus 1. So let's see how to solve this one. So they said, so this is your fx, right? You already found out here. fx is 2x squared minus 1. So this whole thing up here is going to be your fx. This whole equation here. So you just copy back, no worries. So you will get 2x squared, wait, huh? 2x squared minus 4nx plus 2n squared plus 8mx. So this one just copy back love the full thing. Uh, plus 8mx minus 8mn plus 7m square over m square is 2x square minus 1. Okay, so here comes the question. How are you going to find your m and n from this whole piece of equation over here? What is the method you're going to use? Everyone is so tired. Yeah? Think of the method that you can use. Daniel, what method you think? Hmm. 
It's going to also make you scratch your head, right? Because it's a very complex equation and how are you going to solve it? So if you see here, right, I give you a hint from this equation. Maybe you might have an idea. Can you see this 2x square here and the 2x square over here? Does it give you an idea what method you're going to use? There's two two x square, you know, on both sides of the equation. Okay, well, yup, come already finally. So, what method you're gonna use? Remember, you have a denominator down here as well. You can do something with this. Well, how can you modify this whole left hand side of the equation so that you can solve the values? times m square yeah correct means you bring the m square to this right hand side so from here you can actually do a method call and, uh, so that's the idea you need to do you need to modify the equation so that it can suit your method to solve so you will get plus 8 mx minus 8 mn plus 7 m square so this whole thing will equal to so if you times the whole thing by m square this one what you're going to get is 2 m square x square minus m square so now you can use a method so what's the method you're going to use here anyone how are we going to find the values of m and n here can i collect all the right side yes you can but is there an objective that you can achieve ah uh, yeah that's what you have highlighted comparison you compare the like terms means you see here you have an x square right here also you have an x square right so you can actually cut off both of these because you are actually making it equal to each other means the coefficients you can compare like 2 with m square uh, 2 with 2m square over here so that's how you can compare yeah so you can make a conclusion 2 equals 2m square so now they ask you find value of m, right? Surely you can find already. So you get m square is one. The two you bring here, you divide. So I'm here, right? I want to ask everyone, what are the values can we get from here? Because m square equals one. How many values can we get from here? Yeah, correct. m is one, m is negative one. Do you think we are going to reject the negative number here? For this question, la. no, yeah, very good. So in this case, both answers are going to be accepted because it's a function question and they didn't say a condition like such that m must be greater than zero like that. So that's why we accept both in this case. So if you accept both, means you are going to get two n values as well. Means you're going to find out when m is one, what's the answer? And when m is negative one, what's the answer? So that's how you solve it. So from here, you can proceed there, uh, this part. Let me see over here. So if you have your M value, you can compare the other side of the equation. This whole chunk over here, which is so long, is actually equal to negative one only. I mean, equal to negative M square. So this whole thing is actually the negative M square, you can see there. So I'll copy back here. Um, 4nx plus 2n plus 8mx minus 8mn plus 7m square is equal to negative m square. Make sure negative m square, not only m square. So from here, you can actually make two conditions. When m is 1, what will you get? And when m is not negative 4nx. Okay, uh, oh, yeah, correct. Thanks for pointing out. Negative 4 and x, yeah. So, mm, so you can actually find out. So, when m is 1, so you're going to substitute anything in this equation with m is 1. So, negative 4 and x, nothing you can do. Plus 2n, plus 8mx, the m here you can substitute with 1. And then the x. All this is times, huh? so you just need to this thing when you put a bracket. Minus 8 mn, so minus 8, 1, and n. And then plus 7 m square, again got m, plus 7, 1 square, 
equals to negative one square. Make sure it's not negative in the bracket here. This one is wrong. It should be outside because it's written like this. So you will get negative one. So when you solve, actually very long this question. Negative four n x plus two n plus eight x minus eight n plus seven two n square. Okay, good mistake. Eh? Well, what which one you mean? Okay, how come got the x here? Why which two n square you're meaning, Daniel? Nothing, huh? You scared me for a while. Wait, so this one, huh? Wait, let me see why did I put the x here? Oh, wait, actually, you're not supposed to have the x here in the end. Wait, huh? This part, you don't need to have the x because you can actually cut it out from the previous working when you compare the coefficient time. Because then you cannot find out the values accurately. Okay, we see here, right? Okay, huh? This part over here. When you compare on this side, you actually have, wait, huh? it's a negative m square. Yeah, I think still can, only to modify. So when you do here, you will get Hey, how can this page keep on lovely one? We will get this one. We can leave it as eight power one. I mean, eight, eight times one. All this one. The problem is the x term over there. Hey, some seven times one square. Anyone can find out the way how to get rid of the x? Plus 7 is negative 1. You will get something like this. You get simplified till down here. So from here, you can actually uh, simplify this to your minus 6n. And I do down here at the page. So from here, you will get negative 4nx plus 8x. And then on top there, let me see. Yeah. Negative 4nx plus 8x. And then 7 and negative 1, I can bring it over. You come negative 8 on the right hand side. And then go one more term over there. Anyone can help me spot the mistake, you can see also. Minus 6n over there. Minus 6n. So you have an equation like this. So you want to find the n. Let me see. Huh? Mm. How did I simplify the thing? Anyone can find out. Uh? Two over m square x square. Oh, oh yeah 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 mistake mistake. We shouldn't compare the x term because you see here right. I love this part. I did a mistake because here. This one is only negative m square. So the x term over here, you actually cannot compare. You can only compare the constants over here. So understand this part. Huh? Don't make this mistake. Because here, there's no x term on the right hand side of the equation. You can only take this one, this one, and this one and compare. So that's how you can solve it. Can understand this part. Kamu hanya boleh ambil yang part ni. 
di satu, dua dan tiga. Sebab tak ada X. So that's how you can solve it. So you will get something like uh, you have to cancel out this one. So kamu akan dapat macam ni. So it will come Maybe this one I must cancel later. So you will get 2n minus 8mn plus 7m square. 2n minus 8mn plus 7m square equals to negative m square. So from here, kamu boleh kata when m equals 1, kamu boleh cari value dia apa? 1n plus 7 1 square equals to negative 1 square. So 2n tolak 8n tambah 7 uh, 8, 7 equals negative 1. So from here, kamu boleh cari value n dia. So it is on 2n square. Okay. So so far, everyone okay? Daniel silent tadi. 2n square minus 8n plus 8 sama dengan kosong. You will get to here. So, so far, okay? Don't AFK, huh? That was, yeah, yeah, you are correct. I forgot that part. Sorry. So, from here, what you're going to do is what? Will you factorize, huh? What method will you use here? To solve this. This is your chapter 2 form 4 knowledge, quadratic. Dy2, yeah, correct? You'll simplify the equation. And from here, will you use quadratic formula or just a simple factorization? So this one, you can have like this. So actually, use the simple factorization only. Lah. So you will get and n and then you see the combination that can give you negative for n so you can realize that negative negative can give you that the same equation on top here because if you expand this part you can get back this one over here so you will get only one n value so n you will get two so that is one case only don't stop here so you will go down some more actually not yeah actually not necessary you can direct proceed from here direct here already it just have different values only la. But this case, the n value is more simpler when you factorize. That's the only difference here. So yeah. So another case is when you have when m is negative one. So again, you copy back the same thing. You will get two n square. Uh, minus eight negative one. So the m here you ganti with negative one and Wow, but people coming now. <laughs> so, negative 81n and then plus 7m square. So, the m square again you substitute with negative 1. So, you will get equals negative. Uh, this part be careful uh, because it's negative m square. So, you will get uh, negative, negative 1 square. You have to write like this. Uh, so you will get eventually negative one also on the right hand side because it's negative bracket negative one square. So you'll get two n square plus eight n minus seven uh a plus seven plus seven is negative one. So from here again you do the quadratic you will get this equation. So when you solve you will factorize also, so you will get uh, n plus 2, n plus 2. So therefore, your n is negative 2 here. So I can conclude here that when m is 1, n is also 1, n is 2, but what m is negative 1, n is negative 2. So this is a very long question actually. So that's how you solve here. So understand? Very, very long. I don't know why.
understand uh, yeah so i'll just show the way to get the marks then we can call it a day because i don't think anyone wants to stay so <laughs> later the following questions the next section i have i think is shorter than this so yeah it's actually quite long question so i just show you the marks here so where you get the marks when you solve this uh let me see so first of all when you can show that you do the correct comparison over here you get one mark this one over here this step you get correct you can get one mark means until here when you arrive here they will check and see if you get this sentence or line here then you get one mark and then if you have your correct m values so you have these two right so this one will earn you another n one mark make sure you have both huh? then only you can get the mark not only right m is one because n can also be negative one here and when you can get your correct n values which is this one, you will also get another mark here. And also on top as well. This one applies to this also. And also it's the N1 mark. So total is three marks over here. So that's how you score. So, okay. So understand everyone, if you're still here. <laughs> what's wrong in here? Yes, okay. So wait, I come back to the main screen. Uh, Daniel finally come back. Mm, wait, huh? So anyone want open cam? <laughs> Take pictures. The session. Huh? Got 10 people here. Who granny now? My camera started already this one. Daniel sure can function one. And Daniel open la for me. <laughs> Stop sharing. Don't have webcam, are you? How was the session? Give feedback, everyone. Then only I know how to improve. Like if bad comments or so you can tell. Ah, uh, yeah, understand. Yeah. How about the teaching, like the method I use? Okay, good. Others are too shy, I think, to say. <laughs> Later, when I have the next session, I will inform you all in the group also, so you can share around based on how, based on your experience today, lah. Yeah. So I think that's all. Yeah. Thank you. Tulisan will lagi kemas. Yeah, everyone say that. Because I think the pen also is still my handwriting. It depends on my handwriting. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. So see you next time. Bye bye. Oh yo, so many. Bye. Thank you.